Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Bros. My name is Ryan, and today we are finally continuing our How to Build a Big Block series, part 15. We're putting on the front accessories, pulleys, belts, and we're also doing some fuel pump fittings on the manual fuel pump for our Gen 4 454 Big Block Chevrolet. So, enough talking, let's get wrenching. So, now we're going to worry about putting the fuel fittings on the fuel pump. Here's our Summit Racing part number. Um, they're a 3 8 NPT thread. Uh, to a 3 8 barb so we can just hook this all up with soft line if you wanted to use a n line or something more complicated totally up to you but i'm going to keep it simple so i can fix it on the side of the road really easily if need be what we do need to do is grab some plumber's tape and an easy way to do this is put this on and then wind it in like you're trying to tighten it and you don't need too terribly much on there one and a half rotations is good and then you can also test it by doing this with your fingers if it winds itself off you know you've put it on wrong but this is perfect so it's ready for installation so here's our beautiful fuel pump we can just install our fitting on there now we can grab our half inch wrench and tighten it on up so i was wrong before it is a 13 millimeter in this particular fitting there we go nice and snug and just do that for both fittings. So the next thing we can worry about is putting on our pulleys. So we have our main pulley here. This goes on the end of our harmonic balancer, sometimes called the main drive pulley. We have selected a two groove old school system. If you wanted to do serpentine belts, you're more than welcome to. These kits are a little expensive, but they are all inclusive and uh, they're pretty straightforward. I also got some bolts here, link down below in the description, just for this. And some water pump pulley bolts. And our water pump pulley our two groove system to match our main drive pulley. So let's go ahead and put this thing on. So quick side note on these bolts here, if you were using a manual fan that goes on the end of your uh, water pump, these would actually be studs and then you could put a fan on the end of that with some nuts. But we're gonna be using electric fans so uh, the water pump is just a water pump, it's not also a fan drive. So we can install our harmonic balancer pulley here. And the cool thing about this is it's Pretty snug fit, so it'll just kind of sit there while we put the bolts in. Next thing we're gonna do is shake up some of our red Loctite here and put it on our threads before we install them. You don't need like a ton, just a little bit of Loctite. This thing does whirl around pretty fast for a long period of time. There you go, that's enough. I can install it thusly. And also make sure you're using washers and a lock washer as well. Grab your 9 16 and we can snug that up. There we go. I'm just going to put a finger tight for here for now um, before I install the other bolts. There we go. And then grab our ratchet, snug those bad boys up as equally as possible. You don't want to just zing one side on super tight and then try to do the other ones. Just keep going around in a circle and try tightening them up in equal increments. There we go. All right, we're gonna grab our torque wrench, set it to 25 foot pounds. I really couldn't find a torque spec on this. Um, if you do, please let me know down in the description. 25 seems good is what the bell housing bolts are at. And honestly, it was already a little bit past 25 with me just doing it manually. You really don't need a torque wrench. Just snug with a ratchet is perfectly good. So now we can put on our water pump pulley. And there's another thing I wanna bring up as well. We have a long tight pump. That means that it sticks out pretty far from the block. You might have a short tight pump. If you do, you have to adjust your pulley system to that. That's one big thing I uh, wanted to bring up that you have to match your pulley system to your water pump. The system we're putting on today happens to be 1970 and newer GM stuff. So what we can do is put on our pulley, on our water pump, like that, line up our holes, grab a 3-8 socket, and just spin those on. I'm not putting uh, Loctite on just now for this reason. You can't really tighten it very snugly until the belts are on it. Once the belts are on it, that'll hold it in place and we'll be able to get uh, some good torque on our ratchet. See, right now I can just spin it freely like this, no problem. And if you hold it, you're really not going to get uh, very good torque. So we're going to put our Loctite on later because we're going to remove each bolt individually, put Loctite on it and tighten it down. 
There we go, let's put those on finger tight for now. So at this stage, with our water pump pulley basically installed and our main pulley totally installed, you just wanna make sure that this groove here lines up with this groove here, and this groove lines up with this groove. If they don't, something's wrong. You have the wrong pulley up here, maybe down here. You need to go back to the drawing board because these need to line up. If you don't, the belt's just gonna walk right off and that kind of eliminates the whole point of having pulleys. So we have our alternator here. We're gonna put this on. It already came with the pulley pre-installed along with our fan here. Um, they're pretty easy to find. This is just a 1974 big block Chevy alternator. You can find them on you know, Rock Auto or Summit Racing or even Amazon. They're super common. Um, and they're pretty essential for making your car run. So that is our charging system handled there. And the next thing I wanna talk about is our mounting bracketry. This company called ICT makes this, link down below in the description. It's basically a really trick bracket system for a long water pump on the passenger side. So I have both this for uh, the alternator and power steering pump and we are going to install it. So now we're gonna take our alternator bottom bracket here and install it using these Allens they gave us. They're a 5 16 Allen headed bolt. What we're gonna do here is we're just gonna put these in, you know, finger snug for now, and then we're gonna go back and tighten everything. Actually, I'm gonna leave a little bit of wiggle room so we can get that spacer in easier. So next thing we're gonna do is grab our big long bolt and our longer spacer, it's over three inches. Uh, it says so in the instructions. We're gonna grab our alternator. Put this through like this, put our long bolt in like so, and then have our spacer ready. And then it's gonna go all the way back into the top of our cylinder head thread. I'm just gonna leave everything a little loose until the whole thing is together. So the next part on our particular kit is we need to remove this water pump bolt because our alternator bracket, the second one, actually integrates with it. So we gotta grab our 7 16 and remove it. There we go. So you can see our bracket's gonna go like this and then we're gonna grab our bolt and it's gonna go through like that and we're gonna have our spacer. So a little bit of a dance here, but we're gonna install it just like this into that bolt we removed earlier. And again, we're gonna leave everything nice and jiggly so we can uh, fit everything together a little easier and then tighten everything down. We can secure this bolt here as well. There we go, get that loose. Perfect. So now we can grab our adjuster here and a bolt and slink that through and then put a nut on the back side there. I'm just going to put that on finger tight for right now. Just like that. All right, so now we can grab our bolt and washer combo here and maneuver our alternator up to line up with our tensioner and we can install that bolt. Just like that. So now everything's in pretty loose. Everything's kind of finger tight. So now we can go around and tighten everything up. Now I'm just gonna snug everything up. Uh, this back bolt here is a 13 millimeter for us. So we're just gonna snug that up. And you don't wanna go too bonkers tight on this, especially this top one here, because it's gonna pivot with our adjustment. So just a little snug's good. Tighten up our bracketry here. Use a 916 here to back that one up. And again, since this needs to pivot, don't go crazy tight. Tighten our bottom bracketry up too. And then these bolt points that pivot, um, just have them snug. And then once the belt's on and everything's nice and tight, we can go back and tighten up all our pivot points. All right, so what you're seeing in front of you is basically our suite of parts that is going to put our power steering pump on our engine. This is our unit here. It is a press fit for the pulley. 
Um, this is the uh, older school way of doing things where the pulley is actually pushed on on the newer stuff. It's a bolt with a keyway, but we have the older stuff, so that's a way you can tell the difference between uh, your newer pulleys and your older, so we're on the older side of things, which is okay. This is actually, uh, I think, a little more easier to deal with. This is our bracketry system from ICT, just like our alternator, and I bought these basically as one set because we know that this is going to be located in the bottom right and our alternator is going to be in the top left if you're looking directly straight onto our engine. And you have to buy yourself a press fit power steering pump pulley like this one from Dorman. All the links for everything here is located down below in the description. All right, so now we can move on to our power steering pump for our front accessories. And the first thing I'm going to go over is this really cool kit we got from ICT Billet, link down below in the description. And it looks pretty simple and straightforward. And I have to say the machine work on this aluminum is really, really nice. This is a high quality uh, bracket system here. And the other thing I wanna go over is our power steering pump. This is a new unit from New Advanced. I will leave a link down below in the description to this. The only thing you wanna look for uh, when it comes to this kit is this kit is reliant on this stud existing. So if this stud doesn't exist, go ahead and get a different uh, power steering pump because you need to be able to remove it. I've already broken this loose on the bench with an 18 millimeter wrench. So I can remove it real nice on camera like that because we have to remove this and replace it with uh, one of our brackets and a spacer and a bolt, which we'll go over right now. So what we're gonna do is take one of these brackets. They're kind of shaped like an L. We're gonna take the half inch spacer and the longest bolt in our kit here. We're gonna put it through and we're gonna put it through our bracket system like this, put the spacer on the end of that, and then we're gonna install it like this on the back of our power steering pump. And we're just gonna leave this finger typer right now. We'll go ahead and tighten this when everything's kind of set in place. All right, so now we're on the front of the power steering pump. We're gonna grab another one of these uh, kind of L-shaped brackets. And what this is gonna do is basically sandwich the unit like this. So we can go ahead and install that just finger tight again. So I noticed in this kit that this bolt is just a, you know, a little bit too long, so I'm gonna put some 3 8 washers on there to uh, take up that distance, and then we can install our bracket like this. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is grab these long spacers that came with our kit, our long bolts, plus our lock washer here. Place those spacers in their home. Send our bolt through like that. That way everything's nice and prepped and lined up for when we're putting on the engine. There we go. Just like that. Now we can attach this to the front of our engine. Now we can install our power steering pump and bracket assembly here. Now on these, we can actually tighten them. So I wanted to mention that the two bolt holes that these go into uh, aren't used a whole lot on stock applications. And if you have an old big block like this, well, it's sat around for a few decades and lots of crud and junk get in there and rust and uh, things like that. So you're gonna wanna use like a 7 16 by 14 tap to clean those threads out and maybe give them just a little squirt of WD-40 after you blow them out with some compressed air. So we can go ahead and snug these up a little bit. Try to go as even as possible. We don't want to tighten them to completion just yet because we want this to be able to move. So now we're gonna grab this bracket that has this nice machine sweep in it. That's actually gonna be our adjustment for our belt later. And we're gonna take our bolts and put them in the front of our unit. And again, we can just leave those finger tight for now. So just like on the other uh, bracket down here, I uh, noticed that the bolts are just a little bit too long. So we're gonna take two washers and install those to take up that extra slack there. Oh, that's much better. That's much better. There we go, again, leaving everything finger tight for right now. So now we can take our big daddy bolt here, remove this spacer, because this spacer actually goes on uh, this side of our bracket system. Install that like this. Put our spacer on there, swing our power steering pump into place, and it actually bolts into the front of the water pump. There we go. So now we can install our power steering pump pulley and you might be wondering why it's on a baking tray. That's because I just took it out of the oven at about 150 degrees. Or you can go even hotter if you want, but you know, you have to handle it so don't burn yourself. And what that's gonna do is expand our pulley a little bit 
while this shaft stays the same. Now before we get started, never ever grease this shaft here. In fact, make sure it's really clean with some carburetor spray and a terry towel. Make sure that's very, very clean and never use a hammer to install uh, a pulley on there because the pump's pretty delicate and if you use a hammer it could break it and then you're back at square one. So never put grease on there, never use a pulley. And when it's done, uh, I'll show you that this surface is gonna be flush with our pulley surface, but you'll see that at the end. I'm gonna grab my of glove, the pulley, and just put it on there. Now it should just stay on there for right now. Just work quickly. We can grab our installation tool here. And thread that into the front of our power steering pump. Line that out. And what you want to do is make sure that the tool is fully threaded into the front snout. And then we can back this nut like this onto there. And we are ready for some wrenching. All right, so basically how this is gonna work is we're gonna spin this big one inch nut onto our tool using a big wrench and holding the end here at the 7 16 in place. Why it's so small, I'm not really entirely sure, but that's how it is. And as we do this, it's going to press fit our pulley onto our pump. And it is tough. This is gonna take you a little while and it's gonna take some effort. So now, we're pretty sure it's installed all the way, and the way you can check that is when you remove your tool, you'll see that the shaft surface and the pulley surface will basically be lined up. You can also eyeball it with your um, pulley setup. So now we can worry about putting our V-belts on, and uh, I have the first one, which we're gonna do is our power steering, and it is AC Delco uh, 15460. And it's just a standard V-belt. They're available basically everywhere, but I will leave a link down below in the description to it. And we can go ahead and put that on and put that on our first rung like that. So uh, you're going to be tempted to grab the power steering pump by the reservoir. Uh, never do that because it's just held on with a big O-ring and can cause leaks. So what you want to do is use the bracket system to your advantage, just like that. So we can swing that over, kind of see what it'll look like when the belt is taut. What we're going to do is grab a nice large standard screwdriver or pry bar here. And we're just gonna put it against the timing cover bolt and then actually over our bracket system here and tighten that down. And we're just gonna go, yeah, it doesn't need to be super tight. Don't go crazy with it. And yeah, it's not very scientific and you might have to retighten it after the car's been running a little bit. That's okay too. So now we can go around, now that our belt is nice and taut, we can go around and tighten all of the bolts that hold the power steering pump to the front of the engine, including the ones on the back here and that bracket we showed and the ones on the back. So now we can worry about our alternator belt and bracket. Uh, we have our AC Delco part number 15450, linked down below in the description for our alternator belt. So what we can do to put this uh, belt on is put on the alternator first and then our harmonic balancer down below and then on our water pump. So now we can grab a 5 8 open end wrench here and walk out our adjuster. And again, it doesn't need to be crazy tight. Don't go nuts with it. You know, you just want the belt to be taut, but not like crazy, crazy tight. And then after you've been driving the car for a while, go ahead and recheck this, because the belt can stretch. And there we go, once you kind of get this boing action out of the belt. Don't go any tighter, leave it just like that. So now we can go back and tighten all of our bolts that have to deal with the adjustment and uh, just give the alternator bracket bolts a nice one over on tightness as well. All right, after all our bolts and bracket and uh, turnbuckle adjustment is perfect. What we're gonna do is wind in our turnbuckle jam nuts here. And one of these is reverse thread from the other. That's actually how this whole adjuster works here. And then we're just gonna tighten those up. Nice and snug. Just like that. 
So now that we have our pulley installed with our belts, the belts are actually holding in place. You can't actually rotate this by hand so we can get uh, these bolts on nice and tight and apply some Loctite. Go ahead and put some on. Don't go too crazy with it. Then we can... Thread those in. And then we can snug these up. Just like that, go ahead and do what I did there for these other three bolts and you're home free. All right, check out how nice this looks. It looks absolutely incredible. Uh, before we go though, I wanna mention that you're gonna go ahead and give every bolt that we touched today another check on tightness, just give them a little bit more love on that. And then I also wanted to bring up uh, how your belts are lined up. If your belts aren't lined up, uh, you need to get different pulleys or something because if the adjustment's off at all, the belts are always just going to walk right off. So that's something to consider as well. And then I also wanted to bring up, uh, you're going to want to check these belt tensions again at about 500 miles or so. There's, there's a lot of people that say 100 miles, 500 miles, 1,000 miles, whatever. Just check them again somewhere down the line. Thank you so much for watching. That's how you put on your front accessories, uh, pulleys and belts for a 44 uh, big block Chevy. This is something you could totally do at home in the comfort of your own garage. It is very approachable and straightforward and uh, it's just plain fun if you ask me. I'm sorry these videos are taking a little bit longer than I would have liked to get out, but trust me, every time I upload a video I am thinking about uploading my 454. It's just I ran into some roadblocks building the car around it. It's actually pretty tough to put a big block into a GMF body. Uh, when you've never done it before. So just getting the headers alone on there was uh, <laughs> a saga. So I hope you'll be patient with me and uh, make sure you subscribe down below for more big block content coming very soon. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.